Good morning and welcome to the Maxton Athletic Center for the start of Sarah Check 2024. This is the NTSY Summer Best Summer Ever pregame show, featuring a tier one qualifier between the number three Flatbush, Yeshiva Flatbush Falcons and the number 14 seeded Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem. I'm Ari Greenberg, joined alongside by my colleague and friend, Ari Schaff. Ari, can you tell us a little about, about these team seasons and everything leading up to this game? Yeah, absolutely. Flatbush just lost a tough game in the Yeshiva League Championship game against Mag and David in overtime. Let's see how they come out today. I expect them to be fired up, play with a lot of defensive intensity. As for Pukes, Pukes last year won Tier 2. They had a great run, run last year. I expect a lot more of the same. Let's see if they can get it done in Tier 1 today. And who are the key players for both of these teams leading into this game today? Yeah, for Flatbush, it's Benny Kata. He does it all. He doesn't score that much. He can, but his blocks, his rebounds, his defensive presence makes a big difference in this game. And for Fuchs, Nate Jacob, the shooter, he's averaging about 28 points per game. He can shoot from anywhere. If you're Flatbush, keep an eye on him at all times. I expect to see some great defense on him on the perimeter throughout this game. We're going to be back in just a few minutes for tip-off. We're going to send it to a short break. What does it mean to be yourself? It's being bold. For the alley, for the oh my goodness! It's having heart. I know that I have a responsibility and a platform uh, to shed light on the Jewish community as a whole. This is the professional debut for Ryan Terrell. He's trying to be the first ever Orthodox Jew to play in the NBA. But most of all, it's being proud and wearing it. Clipped helped Ryan's fans show their pride. Let us help you spread the pride at your school with your own hassle-free merch shop. Contact Clip today for your free consultation. Never be afraid to be who you are. Say it! The, the maturity level is there. They're locked in the whole time, so it, it's, it's a really good environment to get better. I don't know if didn't look at anyone but himself. Well, the best part about this is seeing these kids, how badly they want to get better, how badly they want to get better. The older kids are realizing, like, if you want to play at a high level, you got to really work. Hashem gives us six days of the week to say, work your butt off, and I'm going to give you a day to rest. So until then, we're going to bust our butt and deserve and earn our job. So we can focus, lock in. Let's go. Welcome back to the Max Stern Athletic Center. We are just a minute away from tip-off between the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem and the Flatbush Falcons. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. You know, the last few years, Fuchs, they've been in this spot before. They've been a 14 seed, a 13 seed, and they've had a matchup against one of the top receiver league teams. Uh, two years ago, it was TABC. Last year, it was against North Shore, who won the receiver league championship last year. So for them, trying to get over this hump in tier one quarterfinals, to get the tier one quarterfinals, going to be a big chance for them today. And early on, let's see how this huge Mizrahi crowd that's traveled all the way out here from Cleveland will help them in this matchup. And for the starting lineups for the Flatbush Falcons, we'll have number 34, Benny Keita, number 35, Joseph Shama, number 14, Isaac Cooper, number 24, Ronnie Shia, and number 2, Richard Haddad. And for the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem, Starting lineups will have number two, Uriel Joel, number 15, Alicia Pizem, number 30, Moshe Jacobs, number 34, Nate Jacobs, and number 23, Gavriel Gakovich. 
Yeah, I mean, just going back to Flatbush, we talked about Benny Kata in the pregame show. Isaac Cooper, one of the better shooters in this tournament. If you have your Fuchs, you have to keep an eye on him at all times. He can pull from anywhere. If you have any space on the perimeter, he's going to take the shot. So if you're Fuchs, make sure you're up on him on the perimeter and force him to put the ball on the floor and take the basket. Because if he can get shots from the outside, it's going to be a long night for them. Or morning. Fuchs is going to be wearing the blue jersey, shooting right to left. And Flappish will be wearing white, shooting left to right. Number 34, Benny Keita for Flappish will be taking the tip against number 15, Alicia Paizem from Fuchs Mizrahi. And we're off. <laughs> Benny Keita wins the tip and passes it to number 14, Isaac Cooper. Shy with the ball, passes to Haddad at the top of the key. Cooper dribbles out back to Haddad. Into the corner. Close out by Dekovich. Up for up for a shot is Kada on these fouls. Goes to the line shooting too. Yeah, you see in that possession, Fuchs putting two guys on the ball, which leaves the interior at a vulnerable position. Benny Kada, he's able to establish position. It got him the ball inside. It's gonna be a long morning if they're gonna be able to give him position down low like that every time. I yeah, wish to see how Fuchs is defensively be able to hang, handle this powerful Flatbush offense, and uh, Kata misses the first free throw. And Kata goes to the line, missing both, with Uriel Joel getting the rebound. But a jump ball is called, and it's going to be Fuchs Mizrahi ball. Yeah, we spoke about this. Flatbush is a very aggressive defensive team. So they're, as you see right now, coming out in full court press. Expect to see a lot of that this game. Mizrahi struggling to make the press, gets it across to Joel, brings it up. Over to Nate Jacobs, Moshe Jacobs. Out to the corner. The three is missed by... Cooper dribbles up the ball on the rebound. Back to Haddad. And the ball is almost taken by Nate Jacobs, but it's out of bounds. Yeah, that last possession was a free point by Chief's best player, Nate Jacobs. So that's a good look for them. I'm sure they would take that 10 times out of 10. Couldn't get it to go there, but they're going to continue to look to feed him early and often in this game. And down to Adonis, top of the key, falls out of play. And over to Cooper, back to Adon. And the ball's out of bounds. Great defense by the Fuchs off the defense, and the crowd gets wild. Yeah, Fuchs is playing a, a sense of a matchup zone where one pass away is in heavy help, so any drive through the basket are going to be met with multiple bodies, and that's going to deter any drive through basket by this flat push offense. Nate Jacobs dribbling, hounded by Moshe, by Haddad, goes up for a layup, and it's good. First two points of tier one qualifier, Sarah Tech 24. Yeah, I mean, we saw the fall pressure on Nate Jacobs. They fear his shot. He puts the ball on the floor, almost loses it, which is what Flappers wants. Stays with it, gets the layup to go. Cooper with the ball dribbling in the corner, drives to the hoop, puts up the layup. No good, but it's rebound by Keita, and he puts it in and, and tied all up at two. Moshe Jacobs up the court. Pass it to Joel, and an easy way. Great, great, great yeah. break there by Yeah, Fuchs has done a tremendous job breaking the press early in this game. Let's see if they can continue to do that throughout this game. And Shama with the ball over back to the top of Kudadad. Over to Shia, he dribbles in out to the corner. But the three is blocked and stuffed by Paizem. And the Fuchs' Rocky crowd gets hyped. Yeah, and that's exactly what Fuchs is trying to do with this game. They want to deter any drive to the basket, force the ball to stay on the perimeter, not let any drive get to the basket. You know, we saw earlier Benny Kata got a layup to go, but for the most part, they've done a good job of preventing any dribble penetration. And Flatbush makes their first sub, number 12, Dennis Kassim for number two, Richard Haddad. Great defense there by Fuchs to prevent the inbound pass there. 
Yeah, you saw Kata set a screen for Cooper to cur curl out on the perimeter. He slipped the screen, so they had an open Kata there, but a good kick ball, and it's going to be thrown in once again for Flatbush. Ball inbounded to shy up at the top of the key. Back out to... And a three is sunk by Cooper in the corner to silence the crowd. Yeah, if you're going to let anybody shoot, that's the one guy you cannot let shoot on Flatbush. And you, going back on the last possession, you saw the extra pass that Shia made to the corner to Cooper, and that's just an unselfish basketball play and a lot of credit to Shia. And Fuchs is really pushing the piece here, trying to break Flatbush's uh, press, and the foul there was called the number 22, Albert Kuski. Moshe Jacobs with the ball to the top of the key, dribbles in, puts up a layup off the backboard, and it is good. Yeah, so far, Fuchs has been able to attack this aggressive ball pressure piece and by Flatbush and get to the basket. If they can continue to do that, it's going to open up driving kick opportunities throughout this game, which is what Fuchs excels at. Shia in the ball at the corner, pass it over, ball is turned over, and it's going to stay with Flatbush, but an excellent defense there by Fuchs. Yeah, you saw Fuchs trying to front the post there against Benny Keita. That pass was made, it was an errant pass, nearly forced turnover, but so far Fuchs has done a great job of fronting the post and not allowing that entry pass into Benny Keita. Fuchs does the first set of uh, subs bringing Jakey Shawak in, in um, Morocco. Ball passed out, turned over, and Nate Jacobs going one on two and puts up a shot, and it is good. An 8-5 Fuchs Mizrahi lead halfway through the first. Yeah, and that's just great defense with better offense. Nate Jacobs with a six-foot frame able to get that turnaround jump shot to go. He's just an electric player for this Fuchs Mizrahi team. And Shama drove to the hoop there, but a blocking foul was called on number, on number four, Gabe Katz of Fuchs Mizrahi. Ball's inbound Mr. Cooper in the corner, and he's hounded by touch number four. A three is put up by number 24 shy, but it's no good, and rebounds it by number zero, Gorfinkel. Gabe Catch dribbles up the ball, passes it over to Ori Gorfinkel. Dribbles, looking for a man, pass it back to Katz. But he's called for a traveling violation. Yeah, I mean, that time, Fuchs was not able to attack the basket off that ball pressure. So far, they've had a lot of success with that. That time, Flatbush defender stayed in front of him the whole time, forcing the turnover. And Fuchs really playing some uptight defense here in the half-court press. Kasky dribbles it, looking for a pass. Pass it over to Cooper. Back to Kasky. Top of the Tries putting, passing it in to Kata. But Jakey Shellac's there and tips the ball, and Nate Jacobs gets the ball, dribbling it back the other way from Fuchs Mizrahi. Yeah, again, Flappers having a lot of difficulty trying to get the ball into the post and to Benny Keita. Multiple defenders there at all times. Turnover there, and Shama comes up with the ball, going the other way. And Cooper puts up another three, but it is no good. But rebounded by Keita and goes up, and is fouled, and he's going to go shoot two shots at the line. Yeah, and one of the most dangerous things about this Flatbush team is when they get a turnover on the defensive end and get out in transition and that time got a wide open shot for their best shooter but even though he missed it because they went out in transition the defense is not able to set and get into position to box out Benny Kata is able to run down the floor and get the rebound and Kata sinks the first shot <laughs> number 23 Gabriel Gakovic subs in for Fuchs Mizrahi. Kata sinks the second shot and goes two for two at the line. Lifshitz dribbles the ball up, pass it up to Gakovic and they're gonna run a play. But the ball is turned over and Cooper steals it, goes up for a layup, and he is good. Flatbush takes the lead, 9-8. Yeah, just great anticipation by Cooper jumping into the passing lane and getting the layup to go on the other end. Just this is what this team does defensively. Katz with the ball being hounded by 24. Back to Katz. But he's called for another travel violation. Yeah, again, you know, this is what, you know, the Flatbush defense is doing. Albert Kasky's guarding Nate Jacobs full on denial, right? So no entry passes can be made to him. Fuchs, Fuchs was trying to get the ball to him, but the last few possessions they turned the ball over trying to generate some offense without Nate Jacobs. 
and Flatbush has called a timeout. NCSY Summer is the premier summer trip provider for Jewish teens across the world. With over 20 plus programs spanning the US, Israel, and Europe, NCSY Summer can find something for you. Visit summer.ncsy.org. And Fuchs Mizrahi really struggling in the offensive zone, turning the ball over, giving really easy points to Flatbush on the fast break. Yeah, and again, it's all from that Flatbush ball pressure. This is what they've done all year. Very intense defense, and Fuchs is trying to put the ball on the floor, and they've had some travels, they've had some missed passes, and again, you know, if you're Fuchs, you've got to be a little bit more patient on the offensive end, set some back screens, look for those backdoor cuts. When a team's playing very aggressive, denial defense, the backdoor cut is usually open more times than not. Look to see them do that a little bit, especially with Jacobs, because if they're going to deny him the ball on top, he can go back there a couple times. So I look to see them try to do that in these next few possessions. The Flappers up 9-8 to eight with 3 minutes and 3 seconds left in the first quarter. Number 23, Gaudet in the ball for number 22, Koski. He dribbles up and passes back to Shia. Back to Koski, Cooper. Gaudet with the ball in the foot. Top of the arc. Back to Koski. Back to Cooper, spreading, looking to spread the defense, get an open shot. Koski penetrates. Shia for a three. No good. Yeah, and that's what Fuchs does so well. Any drive to the basket, multiple bodies are converging, forcing Flatbush to kick it out and not get all the way to the basket. A three for Paisan, but it's no good. Got it from the corner. Pass it back to Cooper. Shia drives, but the ball's taken away by Paisan. Nate Jacobs looking to push the other way. Yeah, great trap by the Fuchs defense. Driving baseline, that's the perfect spot to trap where you have the help of the baseline. Forcing the turnover there. So far, great execution by this defense. Nate Jacobs puts up an awkward three, but it's no good. Yeah, it looks like Jacobs trying to force it a little bit. He needs to be a little bit more patient on the offensive end. Let the game come to him. Jacobs with the rebound, passes it up to Paisam, looking to push the pace up to Gekovic. Back to Moshe Jacobs, puts up the three. And it is good to give Mizrahi an 11-9 lead. And the future Mizrahi mayhem crowd is really getting into this one. Yeah, it looks like they might have called a delay of game, warning on uh, number three. And, uh, but again, Fuchs getting out in transition. Jacobs, Moshe Jacobs, I should say, flares out to the corner, gets an open look from three. This is what this team wants to do. They want to get out and run and shoot from the three. Haddad for Flappers checks back into the game for Koski. Over to got it. Jamal back to Haddad at top of the key. Looks to get the ball to Kata, but there's nine people in. The three's up for number 23, Gade, and it's good. Yeah, just a great job by Kata. He got the ball to high post. Two guys came on him, recognized that the open players at the top of the key found Kade. Kade makes the shot from three. Morocco with the ball, looking to pass Jacobs, but they're playing denied defense. Moshe Jacobs now with the ball. Drives to the hoop, puts up a shot, and it's no good. Kato with the rebound, going, looking to push the other way. Yeah, just a great help side defense by Flatbush coming over as Jacobs is driving left, contesting the shot, forcing the miss. A nice pass into the into the post there, and Haddad puts up a nice layup. Jacobs looking to push the other way, close out and tie the first quarter, tie the score by the end of the first quarter. Jacobs puts up an awkward shot, and it is good. And that's what we talked about, Jacobs finding his rhythm, not trying to force shot that time, took his time, got to the high post area for a nice floater jump shot. Shot taken by number zero for Flatbush, and rebound by 23, Gakovic for Mizrahi. Yeah, and the shot clock and the game clock basically the same now, so I expect Fuchs to hold for one. Morocco with the ball at the top of the key. Over to Moshe Jacobs, looking to run one last play. Moshe Jacobs puts up a shot. It's no good. Rebound by Kato, looking to push the other way. Kato puts up a shot, but he does not make it. And at, at the end of the first quarter, the score is 14 flat push, 13 Fuchs Mizrahi.
and we're going to take it aside to a commercial. We'll be back in a minute for second quarter action. Get ready for five days of some of the best basketball of your life at the second annual year of the Ready to Ball League camp. Join us in Teaneck, New Jersey at the end of June or in the five towns at the end of August. We're going to have Ryan Terrell be our head trainer for the second straight year alongside other amazing coaches and featured athletes like McDonald's All-American Dylan Harper. Use the promo code SARACHECK25 to get $25 off your registration and I look forward to seeing you this upcoming summer. And we're back in the Max Stern Athletic Center for a second quarter. Flatbush reach Mizrahi. Flatbush up 14-13. Ari, what, do, what, do, what does uh, Mizrahi need to do to stay in this game and potentially come out at halftime with a lead? Yeah, I think they just need to be a little more patient on the offensive end. I think they've done a good job defensively, but aside from a few possessions there, they, they really struggled offensively, especially with the way Flatbush is guarding Jacobs. So again, look for them to be a little more patient. Jacobs gets the ball, puts up a three. But it rims off and no good. Rebounded by number 12, Kassim. A dot with the ball at the top of the arc. A nice defensive play by Morocco. Keita goes up with it in the, in the loop but misses it. Keita back up again, passes it out. Cooper with the ball. Back to 23, Shia. Puts up a shot, no good and rebounded by Nate Jacobs, pushing the other way. Oh, and the ball is stuffed on that three attempt by number 12. And a nice lamp is put up by Cooper, and he's gonna go shoot an and one. Yeah, and this is the Flatbush game plan. Look how hard they're closing out to drive, to take away those three shots, three, the perimeter shots for Fuchs. You saw a couple of long closeouts, then they got the block, got out for a layup on the other end. So again, this is what the Flatbush team wants to do. And Cooper going to be shooting the end one at the line, looking to extend the, the Flatbush lead to four points. And Cooper sinks the free throw to make it a three-point play. And... Fuchs breaks the press back to Nate Jacobs, puts up a pass. J.C. Shoa tries to get the ball, but it's turned over. And number 23. Yeah, but that's, a, that's an example of a secondary turnover. They broke the press, but because of the tempo being forced a little bit quicker than Fuchs intended, that secondary turnover happened on the other end. And another and one made by Haddad this time. Yeah, again, in the first quarter, Fuchs did such a great job of keeping Flatbush out of the per uh, out of the paint, stopping those dribble penetrations. The last few possessions, they've gotten a couple of and ones. They've been able to get into the heart of this interior defense for Fuchs. And if you're Fuchs, you've got to find a way to get back to that first quarter success. Haddad sinks the free throw to extend the Flatbush lead to seven. Fuchs and Rocky breaks, breaks the press again. Ball out to Jake Shoag. The ball's turned over, the other, going the other way for Shia today. And a block there, Flatbush going the other way. Yeah, I mean, the tempo of this game right now is in the hands, is, is, is in, is fighting right into the hands of Flatbush. Flatbush wants this game to be fast, a lot of turnovers, get out in transition, and so far it's working for them. Kata puts up a layup and it is good. Flatbush really push, pushing away here. Yeah, if, if Kata catches the ball and has one-on-one -on -one, coverage he's going to attack that every single time so if you're Fuchs throwing a double at him making sure he sees two guys at all times is going to be crucial for the rest of this game. Shot attempt there was missed by Morocco but goes the other way. Nate Jacobs comes the other way puts up a layup and it is good. Lapich looking to push the pace of God move, moving towards the hoop. Into Keita and Keita sinks the layup. Flatbush calls a timeout, but it's really pulled away, and they're now up nine points about halfway through the second quarter. 
we're gonna we're gonna send it away to commercial and be back in a moment. And we're back, number 15, Paisam's gonna inbound the ball, looking to come back in this one for Fuchs Mizrahi. Inbound it to Gorfinkel. Over to Moshe Jacobs, looking to break the press. Back to Gorfinkel. And the ball's turned over by Gaudet. And the foul's called on Nate Jacobs, looking to steal it there. Yeah, again, you know, this is what we've seen in the last few possessions for Fuchs. They're able to get the ball past half court, but once they get past half court, because of the tempo of this game, and because this is what Flatbush wants, we're seeing a lot of turnovers once they break that initial press, which is the secondary turnover comes into play. Shire brings up the ball and passes it to today. Over to Cooper for a three. It's no good, rebounded by Gakovic. Looking to push the pace is Gorfinkel. Slows it down. Looking for a pass to Nate Jacobs, but they're really denying him on defense. Gorfinkel over to Moshe Jacobs in the corner. Puts up a three. Yeah, it looked like it hit the rafter there, but the ref didn't see it. So either way, Flatfoot now has it. Shia puts up a three the other way. No good. And the ball is called out of bounds. It's going to be Fuchs' Mizrahi ball. Yeah, on this possession, I want to see Fuchs take a little bit more time to break this press. You got 10 seconds to get the ball across the court. Take time. Make sure you're making crisp, sharp passes and not getting the ball into the corners where the trap is most effective. And Gabe Katz and Sam Lifshitz sub back into this game for Fuchs, taking out Paisem and Moshe Jacobs. Ball's inbounded to Nate Jacobs, looking to break the press is Katz. Back to Nate Jacobs, crosses half court. They're really denying him here at the top of the key. Ball back to Nate Jacobs. Out to Gekovic for a three, and it is no good. Rebounded by Keita going the other way. Yeah, everything for Fuchs right now is rushed. Every time they cast the ball, it's immediately doing something, and it's not working out well for them. And Cooper puts up a three, and he hits it. Extending Flatbush's lead to 12 points. Nate Jacobs with the ball crossing half court. Getting trapped right away, they'll get over to Gabe Katz. Back to Nate Jacobs, and he puts up a deep three, but it is no good. An out of bounds, Flatfish ball the other way. Yeah, and, and that's an example of a little bit of frustration for Jacobs. You know, the defense on him today has been excellent by Flatbush. And any time he gets some space, he's going to want to pull it. And, you know, I get it. You know, a guy like that, such a great scorer, that anytime you want to have the ball, especially when you're down 12 and the offense is not doing well, you want to put it up. But you've got to be patient. you got to trust the offense and really work the defense a little bit more in that position. Yeah, and number 21, Jacob Dodd subs back in for Flatbush. Cooper with the ball at the top of the key. Back to Haddad. Over to Cooper, drives, puts up the layup. No good, but it's re rebounded and put up. And number 35, Shama is going to shoot two free throws at the line. Yeah, that all starts with once the defense collapses on the right side, the skip pass to Cooper forces a long closeout. He's able to attack it, and once that happens, the defense is in a disarray, is in a scramble mode, and that leads for opportunities for either Cooper to make that layup, which he didn't, or to crash the board and get a chance to through the line. Number 12, Dennis Kaski. Subs back in for, for number 34, Benny Keita. Let's see if Fuchs can really come back in this one with Keita out. And he sinks the second one, but misses the first. Gorfinkel moving the ball the other way, looking to break the press. And over to Joel. Three put up by by Glyphschitz, but missed. But a foul is called at number 21, Jacob Adad, for a loose ball foul, taking the ball from Jacobs. Yeah, and I've said it so many times so far this game, but 
Fuchs right now is a rush on offense. They're breaking the press, and once they break the press, it seems like they have to put up a shot in five seconds once they break the press. It's not the case. Work the ball around the perimeter, set some back screens, cut to the basket, make defense work a little bit. Jacobs was triple there in the paint, but still put up a shot, and it was good. Shy with the ball, being housed by Gorfinkel. Over to Shaw. And another three is good for Cooper. Yeah, again, Fuchs is getting a little bit of a disarray there. Ball is driven baseline. Fuchs' defense collapsed on him, leaving the best shooter for the flat push on the perimeter. Cooper, wide open, great pass, great shot. Gabe Katz puts up a three, but it's no good, and rebounds it by number 21, Jacob Haddad. Shia pushing the other way, and goes up, and hits a tough bucket there. Yeah, that time it wasn't necessarily a, a transition opportunity, but I would call it a semi-transition. You know, Shia sees he has an opening, the defense is not set, he's able to get the all the way to the basket for the easy two. Another three put up for Gabe Katz, and this time it is good. And, and that's how people can get back in this game. They're going to be able to break this press, make good passes, and find the open shooters in the corner. That's where the zone is going to be very, you know, vulnerable for this flat push defense. Haddad put up a shot there, it was no good, and Nate Jacobs gets the ball, but Cooper steals the ball, and, and the loose ball foul is called the number, 30, number three, Sam Lifshitz. Yeah, I mean, again, Flatbush, this defense is tremendous. The, always, the hands are always active, looking to, for deflections, looking for steals, and so far they've you know, been very successful in that. That time, Cooper forcing what was going to be a wide open layup for Fuchs into a turnover. And the timeout is called by Fuchs Mizrahi. I think the coach will tell them to slow it down and maybe uh, look to push. And we're going to step aside for a second and go to commercial break. Welcome back to the Maxton Athletic Center. Two minutes left in the second quarter. Flatbush up 33-20. A reminder to stay tuned for the Camp Step It Up halftime show at the conclusion of the first half. Cooper at the line shooting two and he hits the first. Yeah, you know, Flatbush is in the bonus now for the last two minutes of the half. Again, you know, 15 point, 14 point lead right now. If this gets up to, you know, 18, 19, 20, that's where it's real trouble for Fuchs. So if you're Fuchs, try to get this lead down, close to 10 if possible, go into the half with some momentum and a chance to come back in the second half. Flatbush makes a four man sub, switching up their lineup here. Cooper knocks down the second one to extend the lead to 15. And Samuel Jamal is gonna sub in for number 14, Cooper. Nate Jacobs in inbounds to Gekovic. Over to Morocco. Jacobs gets the ball, bringing the press. And Paisan tries to make a nice pass over to Jacobs, but the ball is lost, and a, time and a jump ball is called. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was a very good job by Fuchs picking the press. They got the ball into the middle, and that's what you want to do against any press, press defense. Get the ball in the middle, it breaks down deep the press. But again, once they got the ball down low, Looked like some hesitation there. Cooper went straight up with the layup that time. Made an extra pass. That first is the turnover. Haddad with the ball from Flatbush. Pass up Shia. Puts up three. No good. But he gets his own rebound. Duke's looking to trap him in the corner. Gets it into Keita. Gede has it now. Over to Haddad. Passed it out to Shia again. Puts up a three. No good. But rebounded again by Jamal. And beautiful passing by Flatbush. But but Paisan stuffs Keita going up for a layup. And another jump ball is called. 
Yeah, I mean, Flatbush is the team that's right now getting all those loose balls, getting those offensive rebounds. They're the more aggressive, physical team so far, and that's showing on the scoreboard in this game. Nate Jacobs with the ball, puts up a layup, and it's good. And, and that's what we talked about, Jacobs finding other ways to score. They're not letting him shoot from three. Attacking the basket is a way to get that done. And Shia drives to the hoop, making a very nice layup. Hazem over to Morocco, out to Jacobs, who puts up a deep three, and is no good. Kato with the rebound, pass to Jamal, looking to push the other way. Yeah, that's a good look for, for Fuchs. He got your best shooter open for three. Yeah, he didn't hit it that time, but again, you know, your Fuchs are happy with that shot. Haddad with the ball, dribbling out, guarded by Moshe Jacobs. He passes it to Jamal in the corner. Back to today, back to Haddad. Yeah, there's about three seconds between shot and game clock, so they can basically hold it to the last shot here. Shia puts up a shot, no good. Rebounded by Keita and puts it in while he's up there. And Fuchs doesn't realize the time and a half, and time runs out before they can even shoot it off. Score at halftime, Flatbush 39, Ms. Rocky 20, 22. We're going to have an interview with the coach of Flatbush in just a moment. Okay. And we're going to send it to our sideline reporter for an interview with the Flatbush coach. Able we'll to stay disciplined on offense and on defense in the second half. Uh, listen, this game, we had a plan coming in, and in the first 30 seconds, we've thrown that out the window, and uh, we're just uh, we're going with what works right now. So we're sticking with what we do. Uh, we defend, uh, we get in passing lanes, we make life tough, and, and we trap teams. So that's what we're doing right now. Great, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Ari, for the, for the uh, interview with Flappers Coach. We're going to send it to a quick commercial break. I really love the intensity um, that's applied to everyone, um, kids from second grade to 12th grade, that I really don't think you can find anywhere else, where the coaches will genuinely push you and they genuinely want you to get better, and that's something that's really special here. So I saw the schedule and I was just like, wow, like, this is perfect. Like, people here get up early, they, they're passionate. Nobody comes to a camp and gets up at 7 a.m. if they don't want to be there and get better. Also, just seeing that I could be around people that like related to me mentally that are the same and also I can connect with culturally was important for me. This year now coming at the beginning um, for my third year I think it's the socializing part is a lot easier because there's so many girls but the basketball part is also really good the girls are in, like very good so it's fun playing with them and overall it's just very fun and it's not again not only basketball it's also just like regular life, life skills that I really love the intensity um, that's applied to everyone, um, kids like from second grade to 12th grade, that I really don't think you can find anywhere else, where the coaches will genuinely push you and they genuinely want you to get better, and that's something that's really special here. So I saw the schedule and I was just like, wow, like this is perfect. Like People here get up early, they, they're passionate. Nobody comes to a camp and gets up at 7 a.m. if they don't want to be there and get better. Also, just seeing that I could be around people that like related to me mentally that are the same and also I can connect with culturally was important for me. This year now coming at the beginning um, for my third year I think it's the socializing part is a lot easier because there's so many girls but the basketball part is also really good the girls are in, like very good so it's fun playing with them and overall it's just very fun and it's not again not only basketball it's also just like regular life, life skills that you'll have teachers every day which is very helpful for when I go back. Yeah I think that the routine of the camp is like really um, important because the way that we have like five hours of basketball or six hours of basketball every day or like having a very specific schedule kind of helps like with the routine and like really getting more disciplined also. 
My favorite thing at camp is to have like all these kids that give me motivation to push myself, to wake up early in the morning and work hard every time I get to the court. I just love having uh, everyone around me love basketball and want to work hard. Makes me want to work hard myself and pushes me. This is more than basketball. Um, we are teaching them how to be responsible, what does it mean to be in collective sport, what does it mean to share. Not just practicing, they're getting really good and nice coaches, nice people, counselors. I think it's just great experience and I would like that when I was a kid in Serbia that we had something like this, but uh, it just didn't exist in Serbia. And the conditions they are getting uh, at this campus and uh, how many gyms we are having, and pool, and lake, then football courts. It is really amazing. I think I learned a lot like about like the step it up clock and like how to like shot fake and like get away from your defender, like doing like a spin without traveling. And it's just like really cool because I can't wait to come back home and like show it off to my friends and like they'll be like, how did you get like all these new skills? And I was like, yeah, I went to this camp and I got like really good at it. <laughs>
to observe for the day, but they threw me into this game. Can I say something to the mic? What? This is not on right now. Are you going to show time? Which one? Which one? Sarah Check Tournament, our camp stepped up campers, including many stars from different schools. For more information, email office at campsteppitup.com. Call 888-600-0908 or visit timetosteppitup.com. And we're back with second half action from the Max Stern Athletic Center. A dot with the ball at the top of the key. And the ball's turned over, and Gakovic pushes the other way. Back to Joel. He tries to make a pass out to Moshe Jacobs, but the ball is turned over. Yeah, that's all created because of how quickly the Flatbush defense got back, especially Benny Kata, forcing you know, the uncomfortable presence down low, kicking out, Aaron pass, turnover. What are the keys for Fuchs if they want to come back in this game? Yeah, again, it, it, it's for them, they need to speed this game up now, which is against what they've done in the first half. And on the offensive end, be a little bit patient. That doesn't mean hold the ball, but work for the best shot possible. Moshe Jacobs puts up the mid-range floater, and it's good. Haddad with the ball. Very closely by Joel, calling out his play. Over to Cooper. Back to Haddad. Back to Cooper. To Haddad, to Shia in the corner. Cooper with the ball, looking to pass to Kata. Back out for a three. A shy and it's no good and the rebounds rebounded by Nate Jacobs pushing the other way. Yeah, and that's what we saw in the first half. They did such a good job of keeping Flatbush guards out of the paint and forcing them to settle for long three. And that's how you get back from the stand. Moshe Jacobs puts up a three and it is good to put, bring the lead back to 12, 13, 12 points. Yeah, and where, where this game got a little bit out of hand for is when they kept allowing dribble penetration and easy layups at the rim. If they can keep Flatbush on the perimeter and force him to settle for long threes, they got a shot to get back in this game. Sean with the ball, but Gekovic rips it out of his hands and pushes the other way. Out to Moshe Jacobs, who is fouled, and he's going to go to the line to shoot two free throws. Fuchs comes out here with Moshe Jacobs scoring five points in a row to start the second half. Yeah, and start from the defensive end, forcing a couple turnovers and getting out in transition and forcing some scoring opportunities. And that's a recipe for a comeback. Moshe Jacobs sinks the first with Kobe Morocco going to sub in for number 23, Gekovic. Jacobs misses the second. But it's rebounded by Nate Jacobs, puts it up, misses, goes back up, and it is good! Nine point game, the Scoochless Rocky crowd is really bringing it. Yeah, in the first half, it was all flat, but from those offensive rebounds, those loose ball opportunities, and so far in the second half, Hughes has flipped the script in that regard. They've gotten the turnover, they've gotten the extra possession. Kata slams it and dunks! And that's what he does. He gets the ball in the high post. He's got a lane to the basket. Just an extraordinarily great athlete. And it's on the other end, then he makes a block. But Nate Jacobs gets his own rebound and puts it back up. Kata really showing his performance on both ends of the court and in transition here. The ball's turned over and it's going to be Fuchs' the ball. Yeah, and back to Benny Kata. I mean, he hasn't, he's just, this is what he does. He's such a force on both ends of the floor in the interior. And he's just such a difficult player to stop. And on the defensive end, he's the anchor of this defense. He allows the flat push guards to play such heavy pressure, knowing they have protection on the backside. A turnover there by Shia, who looks to push the other way. Hits Cooper in transition. Great defense by Moshe Jacobs, but the flat push, but the ball is called off of Fuchs, even though it appeared to go off Flatbush's guy's leg. Yeah, this baseline out of bounds play. Look to see if they try to get some kind of look for Cooper or Shia to see if they can get a perimeter for three. I expect to see some screening to get them a look. And that's the ball to Shama right in the middle and he puts up a lap and it's good. Yeah, that, that works a little bit better than my plan, but that's why I'm here and they're there. Jacobs passes out to Paizem and puts up a three. No good. Jacobs got three down. Very smart, throws off Canada and Fuchs retains possession. Yeah, right now, Fuchs getting all those extra possessions, all those loose balls. And to get back from this game, that's what they need to do. They need to extend possessions. They need to get any loose ball, any possession they can get. It's important to get it. And Fuchs has some subs. Gabe Katz, Jakey Shaw back in the game, and Gore Finkel. 
Great defense there with their, as we said about Flappish's hands and the ball, Fuchs retains possession though. Ball inbounded to Jakey Showag, Jacobs to Gorfing at the top of the key, puts up the three. No good though. And rebounded by Shama. Yeah, one thing you can do if your defense is guarding you know, the star player the way they're guarding Jacob is use him as a, as a screener, as an off-ball screener, which will create some opportunities for the other players. Yeah, Slavis puts it there in tr transition, and Shia put up a nice layup. This time, Morocco puts up a three from the corner, and that one's no good as well. Fuchs trying to get back into this game with the three ball. Shama with the ball. Out to Cooper, looks to put up another three. But it's no good, rims in and out. Yeah, but it's just a great possession for Flatbush. Just waiting for the perfect shot. Getting their best player, the best shooter, I should say, the ball on the perimeter for an open look. And that's what they want to do in this game. Nate Jacobs gets a really nice rebound. The timeout is called by Ms. Rossi. And we're going to step away and send it to commercial break. What happens at a typical day at RTB? You show up and you hear an awesome schmooze for 30 minutes by Rabbi Avi Rosalimsky and Ryan Terrell about the Jewish topic related to basketball. After that, you come into the gym for three hours of skill-focused training. Each hour is 55 minutes of training and then a five-minute break. Within the hour, we focus on one specific area of your game, and over the course of five days, we touch on all areas. To cap off the day, you have one league game, and then you go home after an awesome day at RTB. Welcome back to the Max Stern Athletic Center. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Flatbush leading his Rocky 45-30. All right, it's almost lunchtime, and you know, Lake Como is a great option. Come to Como Pizza for some great pizza, pasta, salads, and even awesome breakfast options. We'll be streaming the games in the store, making it a great place to watch the games while you eat. Strongly suggest all those are here to check out Lake Como's pizza. Inbound, turned over. Shy gets the ball going the other way, and Gaudet ends up with it, looking to pass to Shama, looking to push. Gaudet puts up a three, no good. Rebound by Nate Jacobs looking to push the other way. Yeah, you know, I've been so impressed with Benny Kato this game, just not forcing it. He knows he's catching the ball in the high post area and multiple bodies, multiple defenders are collapsing on him. He's not forcing it, he's making the right play. He's kicking the ball out and his teammates are getting wide open looks. That time they couldn't connect from three, but if you're flat push, those are great looks and those are gonna help you finish this game with the win. Moshe Jacobs. And Alicia Paizem sub back in for Gabe Katz and Jakey Shoag. Just a shout out to Elie Sorcharvit, one of the Fuchs Mizrahi players who's injured and unable to play in this tournament. Jakovic to Nate Jacobs at the top of the key. Over to Gorfinkel. Jacobs, beautiful pass to, to Paizem and he puts in a nice layup. Yeah, we spoke about this a little bit earlier in the first half. Jacobs looked to go back door a little bit more. They're denying him on the top side. If he can go back door, he's going to get some opportunities to score and on that time facilitate. Shia puts up a layup, which is no good. But Keita gets the rebound and draws another foul, which just does so well on all platforms of the game. Yeah, the quicker Flatbush is able to get into their offense, the harder it is for Fuchs to get set on the defensive end. And that's where everything breaks down. That's where they get the dribble penetration, and that's where they get the offensive rebounds. So if you're Fuchs, you've got to find a way to get back on defense and slow this game down on the defensive end. Number 21, Jacob Adad subs back into the game for Flatbush, taking out Joseph Shama. Kate at the line shooting too. A one and one, which is no good, but Gaudet gets the rebound. Back to Kate on the paint, puts up another lap, and it is good. Flappers moving quick on their offense, just putting up nice, nice shots. Yeah, it's a great recognition by Kata, sealing the guy inside, has a one on one matchup, and gets the easy two to go. Shy gets the ball in transition, turnover, and he puts up a lap, which is good, to extend the Flappers lead to 18 points. Yeah, and this is exactly what we saw in the second quarter of this game where Flappers jumped out to the lead. The, you know, the aggressive defense forcing the pace of this game to be quicker. You know, forcing a lot of turnovers, getting out in transition. And this is what they're doing, this is what they're doing right now. Ball's turned over, Gaudet pushed it the other way, past the Haddad for a layup, and it is good. Nate Jacobs looking to push it, but he tries to do too much, and Kata takes the ball away. Cooper puts up a three the other way, it's no good. And 
And the ball is out of bounds, and it's going to be Fuchs Mizrahi ball. Yeah, we also have a player that's a little shaken up on that last possession. Yeah, we hope he's okay. He's been checked out. A very nice show of sportsmanship by Keita to shake his hand and make sure that he's okay. Jakovic is going to be subbed out, and number 24, Kasriel Levine, is going to sub in for Fuchs. And your Fuchs, the way you break or beat any kind of pressure defense, pressure, you know, full court press, sharp, crisp passes, and quick cuts to the basket. Right now, they haven't done that so far. Moshe Jacobs puts up the three, but it's no good, and rebounded by his own brother, Nate. Nate gets doubled at the top of the key, but the ball's turned over. Shia looking to push the other way over to Haddad, who goes up for a shot, and it's fouled along the way by Levine. He will shoot two shots at the line. Yeah, I mean, this flat push defense is so smart, right? That last position, they put two guys on the ball, on, on Nate Jacobs. Jacobs looking to find the open man, who just one pass away, but they know that. Flat push knows that, jumps in the passing lane, and gets out in transition. This defense is just so smart and so aggressive, a perfect combination. Jacob Adad knocks down the first free throw. As Samuel Jamal subs in for Isaac Cooper, who's played excellent for Flatbush today. Adad makes the second one to number 12. Denise Kassin is going to sub in for number 34, Keita. Flatbush up 54-32 with two minutes to go in the third. Jacobs over to his brother Moshe for the turnover. Just this flat push defense seems to be too much for the Sutras Rocky offense. Yeah, you have to find a way to slow the game down mentally while also playing at a good tempo to not allow yourself to get trapped. And it's a hard balance to find, and right now Fuchs is having trouble with that. And we're going to send it away to commercial break. Thousands worldwide choose Israel for their gap year. Massah has opportunities for interning, studying, volunteering, and exploring throughout the country. Doing an internship on gap year, I learned all these skills that no kid who hasn't gone to uni is supposed to know yet. My experience at Massah learning about Judaism and Israel is going to help me take those values into my future, into college, and then bring them into the rest of my life. Now, more than ever, this is your time to explore Israel, explore who you are on your Massah gap Gap year. Maxner Athletic Center. Want to receive Sarah Check news and updates and get close game alerts? Join our WhatsApp group. The link is in the description of this YouTube video. Flappers with the ball in the offensive zone and Haddad goes to the hoop, but he's called for a travel. All Sarah Check games which are played at Yeshiva University will be broadcast on MaxLive.com and the MaxLive YouTube channel. Subscribe to MaxLive on YouTube and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single Sarah Check broadcast. Levine with the ball pushing the other way. Looking to get Nate Jacobs, but as Flappish has done all day, playing great denied defense on him. And the ball's turned over again. Shia pushed it. He's going to get it to Kadei on the offensive zone. Puts up a layup, and it is good. Yeah, one thing we have not seen Fuchs do a lot of is set some off ball screens. And a lot of times, when a good, you know, physical denial defense, a good ball screen can get some guys open. Paizem knocks down a three. Shy with the ball over to Gaday. Gets it into Kassin over to the corner. Flappers really moving the ball nicely and Shy goes up for a shot. But, it's, but number 24, Levine, is called for a foul. Shy is going to shoot two shots at the line. Yeah, it was good defense. You know, originally got a little bit too much body on that shot. You know, as we see the replay here. Some little line for two. For behind the scenes pictures and content you won't find anywhere else, be sure to follow at Max Live on Instagram and Twitter. Sarah Check has arrived. Max Live is your home for the tournament. Watch games, news, stats, and more at MaxLive.com. M A C S L I V E.com. MaxLive.com, your home for the Red Sarah Check tournament. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors. If you'd like to become a Max Live sponsor, email us at yumaxlive at gmail.com. 
or DM us on Instagram or Twitter. Remind people to. And Shia sinks second free throw, making both of them. Albert Kuski subs in for Shia, who's going to take a seat on the bench. Gabe Katz dribbles up the other way from Mizrahi and passes it over to Levine. Just look at this defense by Haddad, number 21 on Jacobs right now. Just full denial, not letting him get any space. And they've done that all game, which is why they jumped out to such a big lead. Fouls called on Flatbush. On Sam Jamal. Flatbush, uh, gets the ball into Morocco and gets it over to Gabe Katz. Back to Levin, he looks to drive the hoop. Puts up a layup, but it's stuffed by Kaski on his way up. Yeah, and, and that's an example of great defense. You got the initial dribble penetration, but that's not the end for the defense. The defense immediately sends help and protection to stop that, you know, open lay by the basket. The threes put up is missed. No good. Levine has the ball, but a flappish player is down, so they call they whistle it. We hope that Haddad is okay as his coach checks him out. Yeah, it looks like it might be the ankle here, and uh, ankles are always, you know, a scary injury in basketball. So, you know, hopefully, he's able to get better from this. He's helped to his feet right now. Jakovic inbounds the ball, gets it to Nate Jacobs, but Kaski is playing unreal defense on him. Jacobs drives the hoop, makes a nice move, but as he's tripled, goes up and is fouled and two, shoot two shots at the line. Yeah, it's a great move by Nate Jacobs, you know, being that initial pressure on, on, on the baseline. But again, once he got down low, you see in the replay right here, four guys coming in, converging on him, and that's just a defense that knows what they need to do. They know they try to take the best player away, and that's exactly what they're doing so far. Jacobs hits both free throws. And Flatbush is going to hold the ball here and take a last shot down the third quarter, see if they can extend their lead even more. Dukes looks to trap in the corner. Haddad with the ball top of the key, puts up a three, but it's no good. And at the end of the third quarter, Flatbush up 58, Mizrahi 37. We're going to send it to a commercial break, and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back for fourth quarter action of Fuchs versus Flatbush. Mizrahi looking to hopefully miraculously come back in this game. Gorofinko with the ball at the top of the key. Shamaya Ch Ch plays great defense. Morocco with the ball. And over to Moshe Jacobs. Jacobs dribbles, looks for an option. 
Goes to the hoop, puts up a shot, that's no good. But his brother Nate gets the rebound, goes back up with it, and he puts it in for two points. You know, it's a credit to Nate Jacobs so far in this game. You know, they've taken away his perimeter shot. They've not allowed him to get comfortable from beyond the yard. Well, he has he done. He's got the ball to the basket. He's got some putback layups on the offensive glass. And that, that's just a sign of a great player, a player that can find other ways to contribute. Kata, Shia goes up, is fouled, it's no good. But now Kata gets the ball, gets the rebound, and goes up again, and he's fouled. Yeah, I mean, that's just been the story of this game. You know, Kata all over those loose balls, those offensive rebounds. Now he's getting to the line for two. I mean, again, he's just a problem in this tournament. He's a player to watch out for for a reason. The foul's called the number 15 for Fuchs, Alicia Pizem. Kata at the line shooting two. He makes the first one to extend the flat push lead to 20 points. And if you're Fuchs, you know, you see the 20 on the scoreboard, that's how many you're down, seven minutes left. You know, it's important not to worry so much about that. One possession at a time, work for the best shot, each possession, and the pieces will fall where they may. But you try not to, you can't score 21 points in one possession. So just work on each possession, getting the best shot possible. And that's how you start. A beautiful pass there by Morocco to Moshe Jacobs, and he puts it in for the layup. Yeah, and that's what we talked about. The backdoor cut will be there because of how aggressive this denial defense is for Flatfoot. You know, good hard cut, backdoor cut will get you a good layup. Dog picks it up, but Paisan gets it. But he's out of, he's out of bounds, so it's gonna Flatbush is going to retain possession. Yeah, and that's what Fuchs needs to do. Be very active on the passing lanes, trying to force some steals and get out in transition. Kato with the ball in the corner. Hazem guarding him closely. Up to Dot at the top of the key. Goes in, out to Shia. Back to Haddad. Back to Shia. Over to Cooper, who puts up a mid-range shot. No good, but Kata gets the rebound again and goes up. So this time, he can't get it in. And an and one. Joseph Shama goes up with the ball and puts it in. He's going to shoot a free throw at the line to make it a three-point play. Yeah, I mean, just a great offensive possession. Getting a good look for Cooper, who attacked the long closeout. But what a, what a benefit it is to have, to have a guy like Kata, knowing you can work for a great shot, and even if you miss it, he's going to clean up about 20% of those offensive rebounds and give you another chance. So, again, this is what's been the story of this game. This is why Flatbush, you know, has a 21-point lead at this point. And Shama hits the free throw to make it a three-point play. As number 12, Dennis Cassin subs in for Benny Kata. Gorfinkel with the ball, dribbling at the top of the key, trying to get the ball to Jacobs. But Haddad's playing great defense. Rock over to Paisan, puts up another three. It's no good, but Jacobs gets the rebound. Back out to Paisan, who puts up another three. It's no good. And Shai gets the rebound, looking to push the other way. Makes a beautiful pass to Cooper, but he push, dribbles it out. Gorfinkel with the rebound, but a loose ball foul is called on Flatbush. You know, another thing that surprised me, I won't say surprised me, but impressed me so much in this game, is how smart these Flatbush players are. You saw that last possession. Cooper had a potentially a layup, but it was, it was gonna be a little bit rushed. Understanding the situation, what his team needs. They're up big, you know, six minutes left in the game. Understanding what the best play at that time is, is not to force a tough layup, it's to take your time and burn some more clock. And this team is just so smart in all aspects of the game. Nate Jacobs puts up an awkward three, it's no good. Rebounded by Isaac Cooper and Flatbush looking to push the other way. Yeah, I mean, this is what Flatbush has done all game, not allowing Nate Jacobs to get any clean looks from three. He's so dangerous from there. Cooper puts up another three, it's no good. But Shia gets the rebound and puts it in for two. Jacobs with the rebound. He's tripled there. He looks to pass over his teammate and gets it to Kobe Morocco. Pass it out to Dorfinkel to Paisem. Over to Moshe Jacobs for a three. But it rims in and out. A beautiful passing there by Fuchs Mizrahi. Yeah, that's a great look. Again, you know, that time doesn't fall. But, you know, for Fuchs, the important thing these last few minutes is to get good offensive possession. Hopefully build some momentum on as this tournament goes on. We just saw Nate Jacobs really put his body all out there, trying to do everything he can to help this team. He misses the three on the other end. And Cooper looking to push. Yeah, I mean, that's a great look for your best shooter in transition, finding him on you know the opposite side. He's not bringing his knife from permanent from the, the three, but again, that's a good look. 
The Flatbush calls a timeout, and we're going to send it to a quick commercial break. Thousands worldwide choose Israel for their gap year. Massa has opportunities for interning, studying, volunteering, and exploring throughout the country. Doing an internship on gap year, I learned all these skills that no kid who hasn't gone to uni is supposed to know yet. My experience at Massa learning about Judaism and Israel is going to help me take those values into my future, into college, and then bring them into the rest of my life. Now, more than ever, this is your time to explore Israel, explore who you are on your Massa gap here. Welcome back to the Max Stern Athletic Center. It's almost lunchtime in Chopsticks. We'd like to thank Chopsticks for being a proud Max Live sponsor. For the best Chinese food in Teaneck, you've got to go to Chopsticks. Head to ChopsticksUSA.com to order online. The link is in the description of this video. Yeah, the basketball is definitely the best part about Sarah. The second thing might be the food. For you know, sure. You've got to love the food. Ball inbounded to Shamo, puts up the jumper. But an over-the-back foul is called on number 22 of Flatbush, Albert Koski. Yeah, you know, both teams, you know, putting their benches in a little bit, giving them some time over these last few minutes as Flatbush with a big lead. The three was put up there by, by number three, Sam Lifshitz, but it's no good. It's going to be Flatbush's ball. And this is why I look for it, too. As a team that's up 24, are your guys still hustling? Are they playing to the last minute? And right now, Flatbush is doing just that. The intensity has not changed, whether they're up 24, whether they're down 24, whether it's a tie game. It does not change. And that's a sign of a well-coached team and it's just a team that's here for you know the right reasons, here to win. And on that note, assuming Flatbush holds on to this lead and will advance to a Tier 1 quarterfinal tomorrow here at the Max Turner Athletic Center, what does this team need to do to make a run in the Sarachek tournament? Yeah, I mean, it starts with the defensive pressure they, they you know, play with. I mean, it's so difficult, and today they did you know, an excellent job taking away Nate Jacobs and not allowing him to get you know, comfortable from the three. Um, the defensive game plan has always been great for them. I think that's where it starts for them. On the offensive end, continue to be patient and work for the best possible shots, and Kata's going to be a factor. If he can continue to extend possession back in those offensive rebounds, it's going to be very tough to beat this team at any point. Casriel Levine shooting two at the line. First one misses, and Flappish is going to sub in Alan Anzarut and David Natkin for Ricky Haddad, who really did a great job guarding Nate Jacobs, and Joseph Shamash. Shama. Second free throw is no good, and it's going to be Flappish's ball. And in terms of Fuchs, what do they have to do to defend their Tier 2 championship this year? Yeah, as you said, I mean, it's a tough loss in Tier 1. But again, the beauty of Sarachek is you're right back at it tomorrow. You're right back at it the next day. And so you've got to find a way to move past this loss, take some things, learn from it, and build back tomorrow. And it's going to start with them on the offensive end. I think they need to be a little bit more patient on the offens offensive end, work for better shots. You know, I, I saw it. Looked like they dribbled a little too much at times to try to break the press. You know, they got into some bad situations in the corners against the trap. I want them to be a little bit smarter on the offensive end. And for Nate Jacobs, you know, continue to look for him to get going. He's going to be a crucial part for them to have any success, whether it's Tier 2 or Tier 3 or wherever they fall. So for them, again, this is what happened last year. They lost his first game, you know, moved past it. There's still four or five, th four days left in this tournament. And, you know, hopefully you can make a run again. In back-to-back -back possession, Flatbush gets some of their bench players. Both sinks threes. Both Natkin and Anzarut hit a three to extend the lead to 30 points. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, Flatbush has done such a great job of passing the ball in the perimeter, driving, kicking, making the extra pass until they get that wide-open shot. That's what got the three in the last possession. Jakey Shoa passed him to Joel, but he's rejected on his attempt by Darren Kasim. Yeah, and one thing, this is my first time watching Flatbush live, and one thing that stands out is how quick and how active they are. It seems like they cover you know, the space of the court so quickly that there's just no time and no space to get anything offensively, any clean looks. And as we just saw there, Flatbush showing their active hands defensively, which really can go a long way in producing turnovers. Another stuff by Kasim, back-to-back plays. Yeah, you know, Kata goes to the bench, but then Kasim comes in and makes a couple blocks. And this team has two guys that are so effective down low, protecting the basket for this Flatbush defense. Flatbush continues to move the ball well on offense and look to 
score despite this lead. Fuchs looks to push it the other way, but the ball is turned over. Yeah, I mean, it's really started in the second quarter where Fuchs lost control of this game. They seemed to rush a little bit, seemed to start pressing, you know, trying to force certain things to happen, and that's where a lot of these turnovers have happened. And as this game's coming to an end, we want to thank everyone at Max Live who made this possible. Our executive producer, Eitan Trawick, our executive, executive director, Eitan Trawick, our executive producer, Zevi Panzer, our associate director, David Ravid, Raviv, our associate producer, Yosef Silver, our camera operators, Vicky Garb, Zach Rosilovic, Ravi Gershov, and Moshe Rechester, Tech Ops, Jarrett Lazarus, and on stats, Peter Rosen and Marvin Azrak. Yeah, I mean, again, it's going to be a long tournament, and these guys, these Max Live workers, do such a great job. They're probably not going to sleep at all, and, you know, that's that's what it takes in this Saratech tournament to produce such great content consistently. So, again, I say again all the time. I don't know why I say again so much, but I do. But, you know, Max Live does such a great job, and, you know, for those watching, just shout out the guys, you know, the cameramen, the producers, you know, the stats guys, all those guys make this possible, so can't do it without them. And with that said, we want to just let you know that the next game between the Tier 1 qualifier, the 8-9 game, which is a, which will be a big game between the Maimonides School in Boston and the Hafter, Hafter School of the Five Towns. So it should be interesting to see if those fan bases show up. Yeah, and you know, some people might be saying, well, I have school today, I have work today. Nope, no you don't. It's basketball. You're watching Sarah Trek basketball. That's what we're doing today. School takes a back seat, you know, just for this day and some other days, but for this day especially, it's basketball, your computer should be on basketball all day long, and it's gonna be a great day. And Fuchs is just gonna dribble this one out as Flatbush is gonna win this game by a score of 77 to 43. Yeah, a statement win for a team that came off a tough Yeshiva League championship loss, showing that they're here to take and redeem themselves and win a tier one championship. And we're going to send it to commercial and be back for an interview with the star players of the game after. We've come a long way, haven't we? Chalk it up to maturity over time. Because this time, we will not be silent. This time, we will stand strong and proud. This time, we will hold our ground. This time. They'll never stop me from being me. Clipped. Show who you are. Welcome back to Maxter Athletic Center. We're going to send it down to our sideline reporter with the stars of the game from Flatbush. All right, uh, Benny, after a little bit of a slow start, you really made your imprint on that game, 17 points on the night. What changed for you to get going? Uh, I really think we just needed to pick up the intensity and uh, execute. We're playing a little lazy, a little soft. We just have to uh, be more physical and uh, match our energy. So that's what we did. And what are you guys looking for for next round? What are you looking forward for? Good job, baby. Sir, yes, sir. Just the win. We just want to move on, keep going, take it day by day, and enjoy every moment. So. All right, amazing game. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ari Katz, for that post-game interview with the Flatbush Star players. Final score, Flatbush 77-43. Flatbush will play the winner of Ida Crown, Ida Crown versus Ramaz tomorrow. Oh.
They'll, they'll play the winner of Beth the Phil against Valley Toro. My bad, my bad. Um, and a reminder just to tune in for the next game, Hafter versus Maimonides, which will begin soon. Thank you so much for tuning in, and have a great rest of your day.